all the great things in other high achievers' lives, all the reasons that these successful people that you look up to, that you aspire to be like, are the way they are, have all come from a place of being uncomfortable. That's just a fact. Single biggest reason why people have bad days is because they start them off by looking around at everybody else and seeing what they're doing instead of having the focus and the discipline to actually start your day off with you in control. Because everywhere I look and everywhere I see in today's society, everybody's doing everything they can to be more comfortable. They're looking for the more convenience. They're looking for the quicker. They're looking for the faster. Don't ask for security, ask for adventure. And see, it's not important how long you live, what's important is how you live. You know, I think people are always looking for some sort of, you know, remedy or some shortcut that's going to make them be able to do things that are hard easier, but no, they're hard things for a reason. So, they're going to be hard. If they were easy, everyone would do them. We go through life trying to seek security and not coming outside of our comfort zone and we take most of our stuff with us to the grave. Ask yourself, what's blocking you? What's preventing you from acting? Why don't you have the courage to handle that? Why won't you face that? What are you running away from? What kind of avoidance behavior are you engaged in? Next is, what is the worst thing that can happen when you take action? But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. Self-discipline begins with the mastery of your thoughts. If you don't control what you think, you can't control what you do. Understanding how to set up daily routines with alternating brain and body training and killing procrastination. Each and every day that you are breathing in this world, each and every day that you are doing something in this world, you should be focusing on getting better, not worse. Show me your character. Remain disciplined. Stay strong. When it all seems hopeless, keep plugging away. Nothing can stop you if you don't stop for anything. Don't stop for anything. Never break your discipline. Remain faithful to yourself and your vision. You should be understanding that, hey, I can't be this same person on a day in, day out type of way. I have got to check. I got to keep focusing and going further and going harder and going stronger and pushing myself. Until there's nothing else left to push forward. Okay, so let's say you pick a level of competition where you're always winning. It's like, well, all that means is you picked the wrong level of competition. Yes. Because, you know, like, let's say you're a grandmaster chess player and you're, all you do is play amateurs. And every night you go home and congratulate yourself on what a genius you are because you just stomp these people left, right, and center. It's like, you're not a genius. You're dimwit. Right. What you should be doing is playing people who are beating you like, well, as much as you can tolerate. Right. So maybe that's 40% of the time. Maybe it's 60% of the time. But that way, because to be a winner, you want to be disciplined. You want to know what you're doing. And then you want to be on the edge where your skills are being developed. And if you're going to be on the edge where your skills are going to be developed, you're, you're at a place where, where loss, where losing is always a possibility. Because otherwise you're not pushing yourself beyond your current capacity. And so one of the things that I've outlined in 12 Rules for Life is, is a theory of meaning. Because meaning, as far as I'm concerned, the sense of meaningful engagement is the antidote to malevolence and suffering, essentially. Because you want to have a life that's so engaging that you think, despite the fact that I'm limited and that we're mortal and that life is tragedy and there's evil in the world, despite all that, this is worth doing. And I think that, that there's, there's, a, there's a technical meaning that, that, that genuinely exists. And that's the meaning that you get when you're in a domain where you have some discipline and some skill. So you're laying out your competence and, and your, your ability, but you're simultaneously pushing yourself to develop past where you are. That's really engrossing. What's that do it? What that is doing is expanding your competence. And so life is suffering and betrayal in, in, in many senses of the word but you can adopt a way of traversing through life that 
is more powerful than the tragedy and the malevolence. It is hard to have the success you want. It's hard to have a jet and freedom and extra houses. And it takes hard work and it takes time. And it's, there's no shortcut. I don't care what anybody thinks. There's no shortcut. Maybe you could have bought Dogecoin and you got lucky. That is the rarest thing in the history of the world. Ed and I, I would bet we agree. I don't even know. Neither one of us probably invested in crypto when all of our friends said to because we didn't know it, we didn't feel it, and we missed it. So I'm so blessed if you did for you. But that's not where true wealth is made. You have to work 50% harder than you think you do. You have to get kicked in the teeth more than you think. You have to get questioned by your friends and family and look like the dreamer twice as much as you think. The people you thought were going to support you aren't. Some people are going to talk behind your back. Some friends are going to leave you. And guess what? It's worth every freaking penny. It's worth every moment, every disappointment. There was a, a gentleman named David Kekic. I met him. He was paralyzed from the neck down and not always paralyzed. I think it was a jogging car accident. And, I, and he had these Kekage credos. It was like a business card that folded out. And one of his Kekage credos to make him positive, most positive guy you ever met who couldn't move anything below his neck, was one of them was, living the hard way is easy and living the easy way is hard. So before I answer this about multiple streams of income, I think it's really important I tell you this. Living the hard way makes it easy. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading. And I put it off on everybody else. We went, so I said, you know what? For me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell, what the f is wrong with David God? Not, not blame anybody. Read my book, so okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb mother. Okay, roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we're running from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful, as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. If you do what other successful people do over and over again, nothing can stop you from eventually enjoying the same rewards that they do. But if you don't do what successful people do, nothing can help you. Success is not an accident. Sadly, failure is not an accident either. You succeed when you do what other successful people do over and over until these behaviors become a habit. Likewise, you fail if you don't do what successful people do. In either case, nature is neutral. Nature does not take sides. Nature doesn't care. What happens to you is simply a matter of law. The law of cause and effect. You can look at yourself as a machine with a default mechanism. Your default mechanism is the almost irresistible attraction of the expediency factor. In the absence of self-discipline, your default mechanism goes off automatically. This is the main cause of underachievement and the failure to realize your true potential. When you are not working deliberately, consciously, and continuously to do B, and have those things that constitute success for you, your default mechanism is at work. You end up doing those fun, easy, and low-value things in the short term that lead to frustration, financial worries, and failure in the long term. One of the most important requirements for success, once you have decided what it is that you want, is the quality of willingness. Successful people are willing to pay the price, whatever it is and for as long as it takes, until they achieve the results they desire. Everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to be healthy, happy, thin, and rich. But most people are not willing to pay the price. Occasionally, they may be willing to pay the price, but they are not willing to pay the whole price. They always hold back. They always have some excuse or rationalization for not disciplining themselves to do everything that they need to do to achieve their goal. How can you tell when you have paid the full price of success? It's simple. Look around you. There it is. You can always tell how much of the price of success you have paid by looking at your current lifestyle and your bank account. By the law of correspondence, 
Your outer world will, like a mirror, always reflect the person you are and the price you have paid on the inside.